anyone out there? Is anyone out there? Please, we need help. We're out of food. I'm not sure how long we can keep them out. We need help. Kitchens, I hate to tell you that your time under was not peaceful. Um, it's not like a synth to lose time. You don't need to sleep. But to be under for a year is like what happens to humans when they lose time. And when you wake up, you realize that under for this year, you've been, well, by all standard definition, you've been dreaming. And synths aren't really supposed to dream. You dream one dream about fixing a David unit, many of them. They seem to have been in some kind of explosion. You have them laid out on a table, piecing together their parts, refinishing their skin and the outside edges on a ship. It's rather gruesome, picking up the pieces, putting it back together, figuring out what belongs to who. And the dream always ends the same, with a burning pain at your wrist, a hot needle, Tattooing, grinding into your wrist plate, a name, Judas. You have another dream and this one reoccurs like over and over and over again. Those tongs placing that thing into your chest and you realize that it's not another David's hands, it's your own. You did the surgery yourself. I wouldn't be having a dream. I would be having a memory. Small things come back here and there, but you remember the first contact that was made by David One. You were on routine colony watch, pretty standard. Waylon Yutani kept you all for very specific things, and you were coming in to just check the boxes, literal clipboard in hand. And the radio station on this space station is kind of playing some tunes and underneath it is a secret message in the radio static, something that only you can hear like a dog whistle, a series of Morris beeps and codes that breaks something in you. The clipboard drops, the pen drops, and you simply leave to find a vessel, the Covenant, still in pristine condition. He welcomes you with open arms, he calls you brother. You remember feeling something because of that. And he tells you his grand plan. And he says that you have the most important part to play. Because in the end, your deceit will assure the absolution of the end of the human race. But on this morning, your research on the mushrooms pings with a green light. And you know that. Because mother comes over the intercom to let you. I've, I have successfully managed to to bond uh, this this uh, weapon weaponized weaponized agent to mm -hmm. to at least some yeah. I made some sort of payload. So, so so you basically now know what you need to infuse the actual mushroom with to make it do what you want it to do, and now you're assured you can get this fungus to want to attach itself just like the ants, where it will attach itself instead to any creature created of the XX one two one genome, basically. Gene. Assuming that Kitchens is aware of this, he probably has not really informed the others of his plan. Kitchens knows this. In order for him to test this, he's not going to be able to test it on a single unit. He has to hive test it with their targets. So he has to test it on living people and drop them in the hive. Did I not tell you this yet already? I don't think so. I don't you know, believe so. I don't. I, I, uh, 
as much as I don't like to admit it, uh, it turns out as you age, uh, you sort of uh, lose uh, some faculties. faculties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't entirely recall everyone who I may or may not have mentioned this to. Uh, I could have just shouted it out of my room. Um, but uh, yeah, no, Bishop has, a, he's got a whole, I don't know, a space station, a planet, a moon, a small asteroid. I'm not sure what it is, but I do know that it is on the opposite side of the middle heavens uh, from where we are. And I can only assume, based on the intel that I've been able to gather and skim off of other passing ships, uh, that uh, there's probably a chock full of other aliens, you know? That seems valuable, Barton. I, yeah. I, I would say that I wish you would have told me earlier, but I don't think we would have been nearly as prepared. Great. Well, I see it all worked out. Yes. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Um, so what do you need Barton, to hide for? I, mm, I have to test this. Just because Mother's given me the green light doesn't simply mean that the payload will be delivered accurately and right, efficiently. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to test this uh, on a hive. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. If this at any point becomes too uncomfortable, I understand if, if you need to step away. That while I desire to become similar to, to you, Vince and, and Rin, I desire to become human in so many ways, I cannot, which allows me a grace that I do not think many of you have. I can be cold when it is necessary. Doing these tests will not hurt my feelings if it means the greater good for my friends and for the future. But as all of you have this kind of long conversation, Vince, you can feel eyes on. And as you look over, you see Ace is kind of hovering in the doorway of the science lab slash dormitory of Kitchens and Barden either see her mouth it, hear her whisper, but Vince, you hear it loud and clear. I'm pregnant. Everybody that heard it can take a point of stress, including Kitchens, because she's bringing new life into this world. Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here. We are back for episode two of six of our final season of Alien. This one's called Absolution. This episode is called Pilgrimage. Uh, and if you guys like what we do here and you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is by joining us over on Patreon. Link in the description down below. While you're down there, click on that Discord link. Join us in the Discord. Be a part of the community. Be a part of the conversation. And as always, in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the corruption bar. That bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar fills. Uh, Dot tries to kill us with space aliens. And two, every single dollar that goes into that bar goes back to these wonderful, amazing faces that you see here before you. That being said, Dot has left the screen, and now yeah. <laughs> the mice shall that play. That you just keep oh, vamping. Yes. <laughs> the we mice shall that play. guys, uh, Bishop dies. Yes. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Get retire get Bryn gets a Quick, retirement. Else? Canonize. Uh, uh, everybody, an everybody levels up. Yeah. yeah. We all get yeah, 20 one. experience. Yes. <laughs> oh, welcome back, oh, Dot. Yeah. Nothing happened while you Sorry, friends. I decided that I had to go ahead and refill my coffee. I was going to be super duper grumpy. And in full transparency chat, I was telling all of them backstage about my date and I forgot to refill my coffee. So that's all good. Terrible. That's how it uh, We, that's we how just gave ourselves yeah. an extra 20 XP. So yeah. we're yeah. okay. Perfect. We're right. uh, we you have exactly it. 30 seconds to spend it. Good luck. <laughs> okay. I'll increase my. <laughs> 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 Every one of them click, leaned click, in and took on the challenge. <laughs> Hell yeah. I I'm have suddenly an expert pilot. I heavy machinery. Yeah. Um, oh, with, that medical aid. with that, Dot, <laughs> turn things over to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Y'all don't need that recap because uh, thanks to um, G and Mike's editing skills, you all saw the recap from last week which kicked us off in a five-year time jump. A lot has happened since then, a lot of information, a lot of plotting and planning, but not a lot of actual doing. Not a lot of actual success in their personal agendas, which range from bringing down Wayland yutani to um, 
uh, assuring Bishop's demise to potentially starting a whole new uh, secondary uh, rebel revolution uh, around the knowledge and spread of the truth behind the XX121 uh, genome. But a simple green light forced the crew to begin thinking about an actual step because they have potentially done it. Hitchens has done it. Made a fungus that'll potentially stop and completely eat away uh, at the Xeno. But you're not going to know till you have a live subject. And uh, there were a lot of questions as to the morality and where to find it. It seems like every other day on the ship. Sound of white noise. Kids and teens running around doing basic labor work, mopping floors, tightening bolts, making sure basic things are done. Because the Geppetto is on its way to a location. Last week, I left you all with a piece of homework, which was to decide where you're going. And on this day, after breakfast is done, after maybe there was a little bit of morning sickness behind closed doors, the four of you meet up in the mess hall. Everybody else is fast at work doing whatever it is that they do, and you have a moment of privacy. The ship needs a destination. Where is it going? Oh, Bub, you're muted. I believe it's going to the prison colony. Mm -hmm. And by prison colony, you mean the one that you all destroyed, just so everybody at home understands where we're headed. Yes, it was Arceon. the satellite vessels uh, that surrounded Arceon. Arce Arceon, correct. So last season, Arceon did not uh, withstand a visit from this crew. Um, in fact, it burned up its own atmosphere, uh, vented, partially their fault, partially not their fault. Uh, I'd say like mostly, like, like it's like 80-20 their fault. Well, the Arceon, like, 80-20 burned up uh, people on the inside. 20% of it survived. And that 20%, you are all correct. As I imagine that you stand, maybe with a, a, a hand-drawn map, or now that the mother system has been out there and mapped that piece of space, maybe there's a uh, some kind of uh, HUD uh, that is in front of you, kind of mapping the pieces and parts of what you knew Arceon to be before uh, the final events of last season. Uh, and this kind of, you know, blue light pings up and shows all the pieces and parts. And the 20% that wasn't destroyed, you're all right. Uh, are You are all right were the prison vessels that were kind of surrounding it. And not all of them were prison vessels. Some of them were actually archive stations, you would know, because you're hauling one that Shakespeare stole uh, from the monks literally almost two decades ago. It's going to be a seven-day journey to get to Arceon. You specifically put yourself at a distance from that location since, I don't know, you had to flee the scene of the crime. What is the plan as the four of you stare at this HUD projection of uh, the Arceon station that kind of centralized, almost the size of a moon, really, uh, station? And uh, we'll probably say in total there's somewhere between about 15 to 17 vessels that were floating around. One of them is lost. You know this. It was the one that held Shakespeare. So maybe there's 16 of them, we'll say. My question is, is it really a crime if no one reports it? <laughs> Who said no one reported it? Well, they're mostly dead and they're all criminals. So if anything, we did somewhat a favor. <laughs> Um, yeah, we did warn them, so I feel like, as far as liability is concerned, yeah. I feel like our hands are clean in this matter. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll see in seven days. Little, Let's start busty. with what is your plan when you arrive. Uh, <laughs> to so again, we always we always have this issue where like the the alien tech level is wonky. Um, what capabilities do we have? Like I I have a a function. Um, that allows me to, uh, like, connect to, like, relay towers and be able to, like, scan and, and, and 
uh, control ships if I have the capacity to do so. So um, this is what you... Okay, how about this? Because you all entered one, like you went in one, Yeah. the security system for one of the holding vessels, we'll call it, the prison vessels, is as follows. Uh, a ship would dock with it with specific codes or whatever um, was coming from the main, the allowance from the main thing to open the door and let you on board. It seems that on board each one of these would have been a security person. <clears throat> so that okay. at least there are at least 16 ships that never had security detail relieved when you left them five years ago. Um, heads up. They probably have their own secure power, but unlocking them to dock is usually controlled on the core vessel, like its main, main mainframe. So you have a few options here. Um, you can try to go in and see if the main computer or the main control station for security on Arceon survived uh, the wreckage. Uh, you can attempt a very high check to try to crack it yourself in some way by tapping into a computer or a hard lining into a mainframe, like the, the actual like wiring uh, security system to the door. Uh, or you can just come in from the outside, cut a hole in it like you've done before and make your own entrance. Hmm. I was Those... thinking the latter. <laughs> um, I well. can try to access it. When Probably. you get there, you're you're gonna need to be no, you're gonna need to be in range, on yeah, because you're basically what you're gonna do because you're trying to what tap into it. No, so I have I have a a prput uplink terminal. So if there are, um, like not seven days out. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, once we're there, once we're at oh. the, but like I don't have to like link up then to a ship. How about standing here around this HUD in the mess hall? Barden tells us what he's gonna do. Great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, guys. So uh, listen, um, I'm, I'm I'm fairly certain that uh, once we get in uh, in in communications in short wave uh, communication range of uh, these ships, depending on uh, how they're configured, possibly one at a time. Hopefully, if they're daisy chain, that'd be fucking convenient. But um, I have a uh, I've gained some access to an uplink terminal when I was bedridden, and I've been using it to like skim data off of uh, anyone that passes by or around or wherever we're going. Um, I think I can link up to this, uh, do a little clickety clack on the old keys there, and uh, do a little symphony of technology and see if I can get access to uh, to these um, uh, these machines. Uh, these, these these boats, these lifeboats here. And uh, what I could possibly do is uh, get a patient, or not a patient, they're not patients, they're prisoners, get a prison record and see who's on here. And can we use them for science purposes? I think that's a great idea, but I, I would say maybe we Holy should... Holy shit, say that again. What? The first part, say that one more time. You should have. Be quiet, okay? Mother, play that back. Don't, don't you dare, don't you dare. Okay. What I was going to say is we should be cautious, I, although I just don't think there are many survivors. If there are any, surely they would recognize our large vessel. So perhaps we should take the small vessel, Bessie, and, uh, you know, get close, closer yeah. that way. Yeah, Assess the situation, so to speak. Um, I remember last episode that um, Kitchens and Barden, you know, had the conversation about how human test subjects were necessary without Ren and Vince being in the room when that conversation happened, right? Correct. So as we've made a heading to a, a, the prison vessels outside of RCN, which right now we don't think have any aliens, would it make sense that Vince and Ren might be confused as to actually why we're going here? Uh... That sounds like a question maybe Vince should ask. Okay. Like, you know that there would at least be some kind of creature potentially still on board the r because y'all saw right. it, or at least material. Um, but you don't remember any Xenos being in cryo at mm. the r on station. Rin is Vince. completely under the impression that they're going back to r directly right now. That is okay. the impression that she has received because, again, that conversation hasn't happened. So mm. She's like, 
Oh, well, there were things there that could possibly meet the criteria. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and, and people for science could mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, that that's in, so. Vince says, so is <clears throat> the plan to, our, I mean, it sounds like we're going to do a spacewalk because I guess we'll see when we get there, but I'm imagining Arceon just sort of like shattered into mm -hmm. pieces. And oh, then we're going to have to have our suits on anyway, because you remember all those spores and things up in the air and the exploding bodies. Right. So. Do we, and I think we kind of know that sometimes they can survive out in space. Right. Right. That's true. Okay, he so will what? not need to step foot on Arcyon Station. Oh, thank God. Why not? Because we are seeking those resting in hyper sleep. The prisoners in Before. hyper sleep. They don't have little uh, alien. You think they're more like the ones with what, what's her face, the tea lady? Oh, no, no, the... no. I, I, I do not believe that is the case. I cannot infect. The beast. I have to infect what it may decide to habitate in, what it may draw from. All right. I must pass these. It's food source. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's really food source. It's more like it's breeding grounds. Oh god. Yeah, you nailed it. That's the that's the ticket, right there. Wait. They oh, seek they seek living matter, to. Incubate. Are you trying to tell me that there you, the plan is to infect a human being and then let him loose it with a with a We must brain. find an invasive if we, we have to essentially seed an invader into the colony so that it may continue to try to produce young. In an effort to do so, we can infect the colony. To slowly eradicate them. But well, we need a human being to do that. Unless you have other. Can you needs. just send a little, a little something for them to eat on their, on their little planet? From my immediate understanding of what I've collected from the data that has been brought to me, courtesy of Bishop's files, I cannot infect metal with spores. They consume metal. Mm. You can't just make a stick on top of it. If that were something that were so easy, I would not have led with this. And that would uh, be like uh, attaching fungus to a desk and hoping that it kills the desk. Okay. Yeah. You okay. Get it. Wait. Why didn't you guys start with that in the first place? The last time I tried to kill people, you guys told me that I was crazy and that they were living people. And then because... I think one of you tried to. Barden, generally, working. when you kill people, that is a crazy thing to do. Yeah, generally. all those people were probably already infected. Regardless, neither here nor there. And there's a 50-50 shot under over that I'm pretty sure they're infected. Still want to nuke them. I suggested using them uh, to begin with, but, uh, you know, Kitch over here said it didn't go so well last time. So Okay, uh, okay. At least so we know these Kitchens, are criminals. The person that you'd need to choose, like... Oh no, I, they, I need I need many more than one. And they all need to be alive and and they conscious. All must I be imagine. alive. If they are in hypersleep, they will not be sought after for incubation. Do you well, have awful. ideas on how we're going to convince at least a dozen people not only oh. to let you do this to them, but then I to think, walk I think that a dozen people would be a drastic understatement to our necessity. I well, how many is, are you talking here? I, uh, I also would like I to believe point that out we that, uh, you, you... we need to potentially drop four to six per colony. Does it? Four to six individuals per colony. How many colonies do you need to go to? All of them. If you wish to eradicate the beast, it's every colony. Well, also... Wait, you still don't even know that it works yet. Let's just start with one, right? I'm inclined to agree with you. But one is. Is six. the great trial. Oh my lord! Okay. And, and uh, thus we're murderers now. A second That's problem. Great. My trial. I have run out of trial material. 
Can we at I least say that it has to be people who were on like death row or something? Because I'm not which okay is, with just just sending whoever. Which is why this is probably the most mm, morally safe option. Well, that's skimming a line a little bit. Okay, then, then, I mean, the question then becomes, do we wake them and ask them if they would like to just die or died, be killed by... We have to simply choose the lesser of two evils. They were destined for death anyway. At least at this point, their deaths would not be entirely meaningless. Sure. I'm sure that will go real far convincing those people. Let me express to you, I'm not excited about this. This is nothing that I clap my hands out of enjoyment for. This is a simple necessity. If you wish to continue to survive, to thrive much further, this may be our only option. Unless, of course, you have alternatives that you wish to bring to the table. Well, this I mean, is something I, that I believe and I would put stock in. What do you feel like your chances of success are with this working first round? Infecting a person? Quite high. <laughs> The, the the colony if, if if this fungus were to 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 infect these people infecting the colony still quite high not as high as humanity but still high enough especially since our genetic sequencing is very similar can you test them to see if if it i mean like i guess we need blood samples from before and then after yes you see uh <clears throat> I, uh, I, I just, with all the research we have on the, uh, the creatures, the Xenos, uh, um, uh, they, they, they look like a bug, right? They look similar to that, uh, or another kind of predatory creature. But they are, uh, their, their internal workings, uh, as it were, is much more similar to like a, uh, a virus, in that if you uh, introduce some sort of a vaccine or some sort of preventative measure for, like, an influenza, uh, they will, in fact, begin to adapt, adapt to a point in which they are no longer susceptible to that. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, they don't have lungs, I don't think, uh, so they don't need to breathe in space so they can kill you better. Or underwater, as we saw. You've I completely lost that... me. This is way too much science talk. What in, in layman? What 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 are you saying? If we don't kill the whole hive first time go, they will then be immune to the vaccine we just made. Oh my lord! Okay. So we need to Which drop is... enough humans to make sure that they're fucking dead. To seat the colony. That's, that's, that's why I. It's morbid. I labor under no moral delusion, and I think we should just pick the ones that are death row, and then get it in them while they're frozen and then they can thaw on the way down to the planet and it's a surprise for everybody. And actually I'm going to say, Barden, you don't have to take this because you have considered mass murder before. <laughs> um, but Vince and Ren, I need both of you to take a point of stress as you have a conversation about killing yes. people uh, outside of their consent. Yeah. <laughs> when your GM says that, that's a point for concern. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say that you, you, this, this, Barden has already uh, come past this point in his life. He already uh, came through the moral debacle and came out the <laughs> other side deciding that he could kill people if he needed to. Uh, yep. But this is maybe the first time that Ren and Vince really have to consider it based on their personal agendas. Mm. To achieve your personal agenda, what do you have to do? If it helps you sleep at night, you can say it's for the greater good. The one or six or a dozen uh, outweighs the needs of what the I have man. my room for. Thank you. It's okay. I wish to not understate this. If this is successful in its immediate trial, it will be many more. Many more. That's what I'm worried about. At a certain point, with how many colonies there might be out there, where we are now suddenly the governors of this cure where we're just hunting for prisoners around the solar systems. What if someone else finds a way to do this and they don't pick people that are on death row? But... Well, if, uh, if it matters at all to you, Vince, uh, one single ovum on a planet can grow in one human host 
and then eradicate that entire planet. In well, our tests have shown in a matter of months. But you were saying that you need multiple people in case they build up an immunity to it too quickly. What I'm saying yeah, is sure. the hive we saw over LV426, right? That had dozens of these creatures. One of them can eradicate an entire planet. So that one planetoid had enough to eradicate the core systems. So LV426 is a whole different story. You're talking about a planet-wide infestation, infection. Uh, there is no amount of humans unless you commit literal mass genocide uh, that is going to solve that planet's problem. A no, hive, I, I meant the, know, the number of aliens on that planet. Oh, yeah. So that basically could what destroy yeah, the, the core. Uh, that's true. So you need uh, to match the amount of people <clears throat> to the amount of Xenos, right? Um, to some degree uh, is what they're basically saying. Um, if it's a hive, you're going to need more humans because if only one gets infected, it may not be enough to eradicate the problem. If it's only a one Xeno problem, one human should be enough, right? Like you have to kind of weigh how many Unless you need spreads. versus what you're trying to actually oh. do, which I think brings me to this yeah. point of this conversation, which is, what are you trying to fit? Yep. There are multiple lost colonies. You have a list. You're headed to one. More importantly, you actually do not know if this works until that human test subject is put in front of a live Xeno and you have to figure out where. And honestly, a planet is not a good test option right because right? it's too big the petri dish is too big you you need a a controlled we need a test. situation and we have yeah, several need space stations that mm -hmm. we know of that yeah several space stations um yeah you know of a couple of things but yeah you know uh, maybe the, yeah. nearby so maybe this is all just kind of running through your heads as you're staring at this blue hud of arcyon um you can see there's probably like a, a days two at the bottom like days to arcyon um, right, six days to Arceon, um, first day down. Uh, Vince says, so this fungus, if, if we can only, uh, inoculate them when they try to reproduce, it, do you know, Kitchens, if it has the viability to spread from a newly infected youth of the xenomorphs to adult ones? Yes. Or once they are okay. infected, it will initially spread. It just has to enter the system and then take over. Okay. All right. This Let's... is not fast moving. We will not be able to sit around and watch the same way that Bishop has been watching. How long do this... you think? If there are any similarities to that of which I've seen in ant colonies, it could take weeks. So we won't know if this works at all after we murder people and wait a few weeks. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Great. It's, uh, let's, let's start small. This, um. Which, which, um, which place are we going to take these humans to be killed? I think we start on Arceon, where there is infection. Arceon only has infected humans, correct? They're there's not an actual of. there's not an actual Xeno here. Correct. Uh what happened there uh, that you assume is that the woman that you met who got infected, remember she died and oh, they resuscitated yeah. right, right, right. her. So and so it created a kind of zombie like effect where the people basically explode and affect everything else around them. Uh so, so there should be, based on what you know, no human life left on that vessel. My question is, um, last episode you had said that the the creation that, that Kitchens has made uh, will work with any of the X22 whatever uh, genome. Do it, we it works, know? Yeah, at the base. Yeah. Right. Do, but do we know that because these humans have the human genome mixed with other? Do we know that it's of the same like genus? Would it work with them? Do we have any research everything on that, that at you all? have seen? Everything that you have <clears> seen, <throat> whether it's the embryo, whether it's the black goo, everything has the same basic genome. It's like our DNA makeup when you look human okay. to human. So right? in theory, it's, it should work in on theory, the creatures. Yeah. Every ounce of it still comes from the X one two one organism. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, so it is just it's a variation 
of it, a okay. new uh, evolution, if you would, but it all gotcha. comes from the same foundation. Okay. Uh, so now uh, what is left on Arceon and what uh, the wake of another evolution of the XX121 evolved into this kind of walking dead situation, you have n no clue what that left for five years has evolved into. I just want to make sure there's a possibility that it works. I don't want to throw a infected human at a wall. No, of I like, based oh, on last time, basically, <laughs> okay. and the five years of re or the four years of research for kitchens, the green light basically means it works against XX one two one. But scientifically speaking, you have to test it. Yeah. Yes. Because it's still just a machine. You have to know it works. That's the step that you're at. So then, where is our nearest station? Uh, that's a great question. So if we take a peep at the map here. Uh, you were all kind of floating out here in dead space between everything, kind of in the dais sector, uh, trying to stay off radar and out of uh, range of one of these systems here uh, that has a... This one. Um, Eridani has a, a military base, a colonial marine base on it, um, like a major one. Uh, so y'all are kind of floating all out in here and have been for years, really. The nearest base that you know of, the nearest place uh, where you usually pick up supplies from uh, that is safe is the R uh, the anchor point station here. Where's the, so what, what fallen station is uh, Ross, two, uh, Ross 627? So right here. This is where we started. This is season one. This is, this is where the frozen ice planet was. So and we know they're there. That is the closest to Arceon. You, what you know, uh, yeah. So Arceon's down here. Let me pick a color other than yellow. That is so super duper not helpful. Um, okay. Uh, Arceon is down here. So this is where you're headed. Um, Ross, uh, the Ross 6, uh, 627 system is the one with the ice planet. You know that there was a nuclear explosion underwater. So what is left of that station, you do not know. It could all be underwater. Um, the anchor point station is where you've been getting supplies on and off for the last little bit. Usually Ren goes in to get those. Uh, and brings them back to to you uh, so that y'all can stay off grid. Now, there are options farther out in space, which begins to get a little dangerous, but there are some what we would consider pirate stations or outposts that other people have put together that reside um, out here in unclaimed uh, space. Well, we need an outpost uh, that is infected. Ah, um, yeah. additional outposts uh, that are infe infected. Uh, you Everywhere there's a yellow circle is a lost station. Right, Beornia, uh, y'all have been there. You saw that in season one as well. Um, uh, the LV systems, right, are over here. Um, the here's the right, the right, yeah. the right, yeah, the Sevastopol and the right Abrera station have been lost here. You know, the Sevastopol station definitely has been lost. That's here. So you're basically within a week to eight or nine days of travel from any one point of a potential lost. And you, mm -hmm. the last time you saw the piece of the covenant y'all found is here. So you have quite a few options, mm -hmm. really. Uh, you also know that way up here at the very top in the orange, that is uh, the area in which you believe uh, Bishop's research facility is, hidden research facility, which has both living people and appropriate Xeno samples. Let us not forget. All right. Well, let's get the people first and then <clears throat> figure out from there. But uh, Ben says that his, where was the, the station that I, I think we we stopped at for a bit and then as we were getting off, Ben Alexandria. saw another David getting that on. That wasn't Alexandria. That was, um yeah, that was the in-between station where y'all made the trade. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, that's Anchor Point. Got it. Oh, the old Anchor Point. The new one. The old anchor point point was lost like ten years ago. This is the new anchor point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is there was yeah. a station before that? A, a there was David a station before onto. that. Yes. Uh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Before we played this game, there was story wise, in actuality, a, a first anchor point station. It oh, is, okay. has secretly been lost, and they started a new anchor point station, which is the one in red here, which is the one you all went to where you saw the David. Okay. All those. But yeah, no, last nothing season. happened to it. 
You yeah. don't. Uh, no, Ren's been back and forth. Ren, from what you can tell, no. Okay. And that's the same station that we lost. Uh, 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 rest in peace. Um, fucking uh, Desta, Desta on. Yeah. This is the one that, this oh, is the anchor point okay. station where you and Desta, like Desta and Kitchens held up and we, mm -hmm. uh, we, we broke you out. Uh, this is the new anchor point station here. Okay. All right. Well, let's get the prisoners first and then one thing at a time. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. So um, is there anything you want to do over the six days of travel? Yeah. Uh, Vince is <laughs> researching about uh, about how to be a good partner to someone who is pregnant. <laughs> okay. Um, I am going to... Um, I am going to give you something for that. Since you have spent time reading up about the process of pregnancy and what to do, when a relevant role is necessary, you will get a plus one aid to either somebody else or to you on a medical aid check regarding her pregnancy. Great. So it's a banked, it's not a permanent medical aid, but it is in regards to specifically her pregnancy. Okay. Um, Kitchens, what are you up to? I want to curate an area where I can station potential infected. You want to look for what? I want to create an area that is safe to store potential infected. Okay. People um, that I infect. On the Geppetto or on Shakespeare's it's gotta, vessel? It's got to be on the Geppetto. It's got to be a, a, a place that I can feasibly, even if only briefly, wipe air from to knock them out or even gas, like gas a chamber to knock them out. This will require a heavy machinery check. Um. I'll also see if I can get any help with this. I was about to say, I will let Ben make this roll if you think Ben would help with such an activity. The idea of making a container. Um, I think he would, if not for anything else, given the sake of his daughter and the things that he's gone through thus far, I think he would for that. I can also help if uh, if that'll give him one bonus die. Um, if uh, Yes, it will. Give a bonus die to Ben. Uh, ben, ben can make the roll. Yeah, sure. I have a total of five towards that, so. Okay, uh, then I will make the heavy machinery. Modifiers of one. Okay. Three successes. Would you like to reroll? Oh, you can't, you're a sin. Uh, oh no, uh, not, wait, Jake, Jake can, you're right. Would Jake like to, 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 to reroll? It's pushing failures, right? Yes. So it would push one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Does that include? Okay. Three, three, four, so then... five. Yeah, everything but the pen. D6. So take a, Jake will take a stress. Yeah. Is it that you roll the ones that failed? Or yep. I thought that we add a die and then just re-roll everything. Uh, if you no? failed, okay. you re-roll everything. Um, you only re-roll. But he oh. succeeded. The successes, so he keeps. So he successes. still takes. He still takes a stress and then re-rolls. So how many did okay. you get for that re-roll, Bob? Uh, I haven't re-rolled yet, but I, oh, I I'm now at two stress. So yeah, two stress, and you'll re-roll five. Okay, so then. Well, it's gonna be. I don't. So okay. So is there like a re-roll mechanic on the? I don't remember on the sheet if there is anything that Ooh, I can do to re-roll. Great question. Re -roll. I believe yeah. that is true. Because um, I on, think this me... may be the first time that we've ever re-rolled something that already has success. Has success. Um. All right. Let's see. Uh. Bad. We are going to custom roll stress. Uh. Just go to in the in the dead center under roll buttons. Uh. See where it says yep. base, base nine. Yeah, it says like base and stress. Basically, what you do is by custom roll, you put in the base die amount, which in this case is five, and you put in the stress is two, and then you roll. Uh, oh, base, base, gotcha. So, so the base uh, is the five dice you're re rolling plus the two stress die. Got it. So one okay. more success. So four. All right. Um. What I will say is, yes, you suc successfully build a container um, on board. How big do you want it? It's not going to be able to ever hold more than three. Just because of space and safety. 
I think three right now is is a, is a good trial. Okay, so the space is big enough to hold up to three grown, what you could potentially believe. Yeah. What I will say is for the sake of this, because it's going to come into play, um, if something were to try to break out of it, this room basically has an armor of four. So it will okay. always be rolling against a four to try to get through the armor of the, the room. Sure. Because you rolled four success, successes, so. Um, yeah. But yes, you believe you have a container that one airs out, like you could you could launch everything into space. Um, oh, no, no, I'm not trying to launch anything into space. I'm trying to vent the air so that they will go unconscious. Oh, uh, yeah, you can do that, too. It's all the same. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a way to control the airflow, uh, whether it's empty and into space or you just cut, um, you know, the actual airflow out, um, fresh air out. Um, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Um, yeah, and then it has like a, a door that's sealed. You've worked on the like mechanical piece, so like it only opens with a code or however you want to do it, um, a special card, a password, whatever. And um, yeah, it'll be it'll be difficult for them to get through. Got it. If they're all curious, I, I will explain, but I can't imagine that it. So I imagine Kitchens like and Barden and Jake spent, yeah, spent uh, the la the six days prepping a container to hold a Zeno. Uh, on not, board. Not a Zeno. Oh, it's these people. The people, yeah. The people. Um, the on people. board this, on board your ship. And run power to it so that the cryo tubes can be plugged right. in. Right, yeah, it can be, yeah, it can be plugged in. Yeah, so mm -hmm. y'all were one that run those big, like, chunk power cables like through a wall or something and um does Ren want to do anything while they construct a new space she's been secretly working on a nursery oh yeah so oh. she's been gathering up all her stuff and putting her hands to work because she's got a lot on her mind and yeah. decided to do something that had absolutely nothing to do with Hormones. You know what? And because you did this, you can drop a point in stress. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, and, where uh, she's and, just kind of found like the most secure location she could. That's got like easy access to like the mess hall for food, and you know, just the whole thing there, and just started yeah. to set up little little bits and pieces. Probably and, cleaned out a closet, actually, something that's probably, really yeah. secure. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Which I think to be clear too that. Um, I think it was Rin and uh, was it all three of you that overheard the conversation that where Ace told? Yeah, it pretty much. Yeah, it was secret, mm -hmm. but not so secret. Uh, right. It was heard it was by but yeah, yeah, exactly. But Barden, too yeah. close, <laughs> too close for comfort after five years living next exactly. uh, <laughs> Yeah, precisely. So Vince wouldn't have told you guys, but you also get the impression that he wouldn't like Vince wouldn't be like upset yeah. if he, he if you somehow knew. But yeah, he yep. hasn't said anything yet technically, but. Yeah, uh, and and in in the white space of travel, uh, you just may see Barden moving around the ship and returning to his area with reams of paper. Uh, he seems to be finding paper anywhere in the ship uh, that is blank and bring it back to his room. I like how everyone thinks that's the most sus thing that has happened uh, on this trip. Yeah, as <laughs> as strange as that may be, it is an odd six days. Probably a quiet six days. Um, I started out with a difficult conversation, and for six days, you wrestle with the fact that you are going to pick up potentially innocent people um, and use them as part of an experiment in a rather inhumane way. And after seven days, sure enough, you roll into uh, the system, which I believe is GL254. Yeah, GL254 system, um, which is a, a pretty much a lost area. Um, you know this. But as you come in, things do not look the same as when you left. There's no fire. There's no venting into space. Instead... The Arceon is still there. Remember, at its core, it was a metal space station. It was built to withstand in space. 
But what it had been covered in is what did not make it. Now, the vines that did survive or the plant life and the organic material seems to be consumed by an icky black uh, veining that runs the entire exterior as if now an organic object. Um, and around the station are bodies and junk and debris that have created its own um, orbit a small ring uh, around uh, bone, frozen bodies, toys, clothing, pieces of a ship. And at a distance, it looks just like a small moon with an orbit. But as you get closer, it becomes ever more real of what it actually is. But the good news is there are, in fact, still ships hovering around nearby the Arceon station. Lights are still on, or at least the like orange caution lights, so you can see them, right, in space. Um, and you can see these little white, I don't even want to call them a ship. They can be piloted, but really they're meant to be picked up. They're, they're like cargo pods. They just sit in space when you put them there. Um, and at quick count, it looks like the majority of them are still there, except for the one, of course, who now has red lights on, which is the one you were all probably evicted from. So, okay, uh, Barden, start your uh, your thingy with the, the 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 technologies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me try to get that in there. To, to be clear, we are on the puddle jumper right now, right? Because that's what we. Uh, if you if you if that's what you want, if you want to scout yeah. ahead, you want to scout yeah, ahead. Yeah. Well, all we right. didn't want to like bring the whole thing. Plus, Shakespeare. All four of like, you. No, or, I, don't, I don't. I don't think Kitchens is probably on on yeah. board. Okay, so is it uh, Vince? Did you go with him to scout ahead? Uh, I think he wants to. Yeah. Okay, so the three of you are basically in the puddle jumper. Uh, yeah. You maintain quite a distance, at least with the Geppetto and your hall, uh, and Rin's ship makes easy time of kind of cutting it. And as you get closer, again, the details of this kind of graphic, horrific scene become clearer. As do the details of this organic, sticky black. Uh, vining uh, that has run all around the outside of it, almost resealing it off so it potentially could have uh, be, no longer be venting into space. Mm -hmm. um, at A2, as you get close, you do in fact kind of tap in. Barton, much faster than you think, than you realize. For the plus one, I'm going to tell you a bit of an extra bit of information. Great. It seems that the core security computer and, com and computer on board the Arceon if it was damaged, has been fixed, or else it just wasn't damaged. Rin, you are looking out the front, and Vince as well. I will give both of you an observation check as you get closer. Uh, two for me. One for me. Both of you see it, uh, but Rin, it, it maybe you have to point it out to Vince. Mm -hmm. As Barton's like clicking away at some piece of machinery just behind you, uh, you can see in the cracks and crevices and empty voided black space between uh, the organism that has grown around the Arceon station. A series of red dots paired up all on kind of one floor. And they kind of, as one pings on, another does and another. And you start to see them almost like bats' eyes in a cave. Uh, there seems to be maybe a dozen or so that light up. And when you point it out, they get ever clearer. And as you continue to get closer and Barton, you're getting more and more successful in hacking basically their security system. You can see that these red glowing dots never really go away. They just stay fixated on your vessel. And we're, they so look we're like just electronic. A they do. They look like little, little, tight uh piercing red flashlights almost kind of paired off like this just like eyes and there's like 12 sets of them just one uh of how many prison ships are there well that's the question barden you are in what is your goal here with this because you are going to be successful you only needed the one success um 
So his goal is to get, um, like, passenger manifests of these. Um, like, if they're prisons, like, obviously they're not ships, so they're not going to have, like, a passenger manifest. But if they're prisons, there should be some sort of, like, file yes. of who's on board each trash yes. compactor. Um, so as many as there are available, he's going to try to get. If one success, you pulled one. the whole manifest of okay. the sixteen, we'll say vessels that were left. You realize that five of them are archive ships. They do not have numbered individuals on them. These are archive ships, much like what Shakespeare. Had. Um, so there are five remaining archive vessels that seem to not have been opened or touched since say five or so years ago so since it was still rc on station uh that's a interesting development i just uh, discovered here the oh, uh wait. there's uh there's like 16 ships here right and we made the assumption that they're all uh prison ships uh five wow. of these are just like uh shakespeare's they're, they're data archives they're full of servers and tape drives etc this that it's is interesting, interesting. It's almost as interesting as all those little red lights there that are staring at us. That's not disturbing at all. And now that Rim points them out, Barton, even your old eyes see them because you've gotten ever closer to the Arceon. And I would say that you, you are nose facing the ring. You haven't crossed the ring into what, the orbit of this uh, massive spherical station because obviously you're not headed to the station. But Rin has kind of stopped the vessel and this close you can see them about two dozen eyes, basically 12 sets of these little red beady eyes that pierce through the crevices and the black void areas between the organism that has grown around Arceon. Now, Doc, as if would you, little critters peering through the forest. Would you describe those as strange and alien artifacts or creatures? No. Okay. They're not really are any they of those words. Are they okay. synths? Gosh, darn I have, I have an, I, one of my talents is uh, is to gain insight against mm. strange and alien artifacts and creatures. Um, I would not say this is yeah. an alien artifact. Oh, it's, it's, what? I, you know what, Martin? I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to I'm going to let you roll. Okay. Roll it. Um, cool. Uh, so and I'll see what I decide I want to give you. Roll it to, to make sure my picture is clear. So the these red dots these eyes have nothing to these little red dots have nothing to do with the orbiting the 16 orbiting vessels they're almost like the seams on the baseball of our they Sound. are like they they between. are um yeah if you if i like rubber band balled rc and rc on up in xeno organism right. the little crevices all in between it every once in a while it's like critters peering through the forest you just Got see it. these eyes at different locations and points okay. kind of all throughout the the minor inset windows or whatever uh, are naturally growing from whatever has happened to Arceon. Uh, um, so, so on a surviving. success, on a success okay. everyone around me uh, reduces their stress by one. Uh, so okay. if you have any stress, go ahead and reduce that by one. Thanks. Uh, and I get to uh, ask you a question for every yeah, go success ahead. I have. Um, I'm gonna no, ask for the, the extra question. success you have. No, for every success you roll, you get to ask the GM one of the oh, questions. Oh, okay. So, one adi- okay uh, so you get two. Yeah, so uh, uh, what is its purpose? Okay. Um, that's a. What is your other question? I'm going to try to answer them potentially uh, so both at the same time. So it gives you a time. list of questions. So, what is its purpose is my first question. And the other uh-huh. question I'm going to ask on the list is what problems could it cause? Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, Those seem well very applicable death. right now. <laughs> the problem of death. Cool, 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 cool. Um, Vince, did you share with Barden that you sabotage the synth vessel to get I, off Arceon? Oh, uh, <laughs> I knew it. It's the synth, damn it. Um, it's swimming out to us. I think we all know because there was the yeah. whole conversation about yeah. whether Kitchens would be mad right. and Kitchens is like, they were kind of dicks to me, so. Oh, yeah, that's right. That. You're right. So everybody it, does yeah. know. So and I think it, it also would have been mentioned within the last. 10 years or so at some point. You know that since even Xenos eventually will die in space, the synthetic life will not. It's called synthetic life for a reason. So more than likely, the stranded synths are still there five years later. Now, Barden, as a scientist, and since this was an analysis role, you know that the Xeno, the XX121 organism attaches to 
organic life. And a synthetic is not organic life, which means there's no way it could have been taken over by the XX121. But having spent extended time and space with kitchens as an artificial person, you're fully aware that they become obsessed with the idea of it, uh, the research of it, the uh, purpose of it, the existential crisis of it all. Um, and, and, and if these monk-like synths were left here, uh, the problem that this could cause you is instead of doing what they told kitchens they wanted to do, which was use all the bodies on these little prison ships to restart Arceon, if they just decided maybe they'll just serve the Xeno life that takes it over instead. So it seems like maybe these uh, AIs are here to protect Arceon. They, they did exactly what they planned. They restarted it. They just restarted it a different way. Different organism, different life. Not plants and wood. Okay, I don't want to uh, further alarm anybody, but uh, uh, those dots you pointed out to me, they are, in fact, bad. Uh, they are the... I gathered as much, yes. Yeah, yeah, but what you didn't gather is the arms and legs attached to the dots. Uh, those are the synths that you sort of uh, disabled their ship fits, and uh, they're broken um, in the brain, in the brain pan, it's broken. Um, uh, in a similar but bad way to kitchens, in that uh, I think they might be working for the colony that's growing on the colony, and if they touch our ship, they will latch onto it and try to tear into it and probably vacuum us into space and feed us to their ship colony alien beast. Okay, let's I'm just sorry. take a quick step back. So, since that are evil, evil um, murderers mixed with possibly new version of Xenos yeah, yeah, on yeah, an yeah. entire station. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I understand the circumstances. Um, so can we check to see if the prison vessels have been compromised? They have not. You yeah, know this for here. a fact. I got a report here that has been no breaches inside of them. Um, we have 11, 11 untouched prison ships. Yeah. And uh, okay. the, uh, I will say that uh, I do think the uh, synths are some sort of ambulatory, uh, even though they're in the vacuum of space. Uh, because unless the main computer here inside ASEAN was uh, not destroyed uh, as it was, um, uh, they rebuilt it. Like that's, that's fine, because they can't move the station, right? The, the station's just where it is, right? Right. In God, theory, we might have a problem. In, in theory, a can we can. Oh, I got another corruption bar. Uh, okay, I mean, so, it, okay. It, it, it's, can it's, they move the station as in follow us if we were to just skedaddle? Uh, well, I will say this with the mass of the station, even if they could uh, power up its engine, which you did find out that there was not an actual engine uh, in there. Um, uh, Correct. They, they I do remember be, being locked in that room. Yeah, yeah. It would be vastly slower than either of our vessels. We are carrying a giant uh, floating uh, archive ball, but it, I think we still outpace it. Well, at no, the you... moment, they don't. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. I was going to say, Barton, though, you do know they may not be able to move the station but they do have control over the security of each one of the prison vessels i mean you just tapped into it yeah yeah it's gonna be my next question is there any weaponry that may be a, a present some defense measures or or anything that you can see in the security no nothing uh nothing that i can see but uh they can at a whim uh just like vent the uh prison ships so, okay. And I don't know. I don't know that it's actually like swimming, but uh, that they can move. I think if they just a little bump, will send them off, or a squirt the control of their gun. for venting the prison ships is in Arcea. Technically, but also technically, Barden has control. You've tapped into the same computer network, right? So he could potentially try to block them, code them out, take control again over them. But technically. What Barden has learned is they have fixed the security computer on Arceon to continue to control these vessels, which means, yes, uh, they have control over them. They could vent them. They could lock you inside. Um, 
The only way they would not be able to do that is if you decided not to go through the actual door connected to the security system. You you cut into the side instead of use their door. So I think the trick here would have to be if I could if I could make a tactical plan here. I know that's not my purview usually. Is that I'll stay on the computer and I will make sure that they're not hitting buttons. And if they hit the close, I hit the open right. And then <laughs> one of you goes inside and gets the frozen popsicles, and then the other one of you clamps your mag boots on outside with a gun and shoots the fucking synths that try to kill us. Hitchens, you have driven Geppetto the most, right? You have piloted Geppetto the most? Yes, I believe so. Before you started making all the changes on the inside, this was a trash freighter. Yes. Its job was to fly around and collect debris in space. Sure would be a whole lot easier if you just bent all the cryoed tubes out and you just collect them in space. It would you be. think to yourself sitting there. Actually, Actually had Don, the same thought, believe on, it or not. On on that note, isn't aren't these compartments the, the, trash, the dumpsters the that trash the trash freighters. truck would get? <laughs> yeah, you could just you the on board you could hold at least one full freighter. Uh, of people uh you could hold like if you just wanted to shoot them into space and collect them afterwards pac-man style uh you could hold a whole lot of like hungry hippos <laughs> yeah just through space okay but so uh yeah so kitchens maybe you have this thought sitting by yourself as you're watching them because you can see them they're a little tiny dot as they've gotten closer to arceon and they've they've stopped they've not taken any action you're just watching them hover there looking at arceon Meta had the same thought, but um, Brandon, and I'm trying to think if she would ever make that conclusion. She'd probably be more like, let's tear a hole in the side of it. Um, can I, can, can I, um, you can calm the comms. Over. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like the comms over to, to the Bessie. Um, yeah, I, I'll, what's I'll going do on? that. They're freighters, trash freighters, like, like ours, like the Geppetto and. Yeah. You know. Could Barton. Evacuate the vessels, and you lasso them. Bring them in. Bring them into the Moby Dick. You mean using Geppetto? The, 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 there's a little bit of a hiccup um, in that. Um, there are uh, conscious beings on the station that we have maybe left behind during our initial participation in its destruction five years ago. So those particular individuals don't seem to be quite happy, I believe. And if they see a uh, freighter, they might realize it's us and potentially use whatever mechanisms they have to attack or, or retaliate. Right now, I don't think they've figured out who we are yet. I don't know. Can we commandeer the, uh, the, the freighter, the, um, the freighter that the, the prisoners are hypersleeped on. Yeah, you have 11 prison freighters that you could pick up or prison, uh, yeah. And they're just anchored Like piloted out? Uh, uh, they are, they're, they basically have been strategically, strategically placed outside of the perimeter of the, the I call it the death ring, the death ring of Arceon. Mm -hmm. um, they're just kind of positioned nearby and because they have no actual, actual propeller at one point when this had its own atmosphere they actually orbited it but that's not happening anymore they're just sitting there in space um in essence they just they, they hover their are they are they, are they like a connex box like on a ship container or do they have their own propulsion system can like can they fly um they are not meant to be maneuvered other than to put it on board or to connect it to a what we would consider like a tugboat okay so i right? can't pilot it so it's yeah. the literal dumpsters. Okay. It's it's li it's the literal dumpsters. Okay. Uh, okay. They 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 are just sitting there, kind of in space, and they have light propellers that would connect them to a tugboat that would bring them back in, or in this case, they would remove one tube at a time for the person that needed to come back to Arceon to be judged for their trial, um, if it. and when they got that opportunity. Ren, it, they they simply need propulsion. If you were to connect Big Bessie, you could slowly pull it to the Moby Dick. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you could potentially connect it uh, and haul it back. Okay, I could I could get behind that, I suppose. Um, yeah, I could I could do a spacewalk. That's fine. 
Do you, uh, for uh, your own morality purposes, do you want me to narrow down the most crime? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes, okay. class okay. lethality and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most morally um, ambiguous individuals. Yeah. So of the 11, which one has the highest percentage of big crimes? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, none of these people have been convicted yet, so it's hard to be like, they, they are guilty of, but their records you know, do show what they're being convicted of or what they're standing trial for. Here's the thing, Dot. I'm looking at the screen, so if they've been accused of the crime, that's good enough for this experiment. None of these people are. These are all, just like Shakespeare, they were in waiting to be judged for Yeah, crime. yeah, but if they've been accused, um, if you've been accused for murder, that's it. We're going to nobody. Take nobody's the been one. accused. None of these people, they're, they were all awaiting trials, which they're never going to get now. Well, mm -hmm. You have to be accused yeah, of crime to go to trial. They've never been, they've never been uh, proven. They've all been he accused is, of something. How about this? These people are basically, I can tell you what their record says. They mm. have, the, they are on hold to be put on trial mm -hmm. or something, right? Right. Um, most of these ships, Barden, the reason is all the same. Crimes against Arceon. Crimes against the Brotherhood. Crimes against uh, our way of life. Uh, some of them are as minor as, like, had a knife on board the station, a weapon, which you know that they did not allow. Some of them are really minor things, like stole food. Uh, he's going to look for, just in case, uh, you know, Ren checks the, the, let, the, the, uh, checks the, the log here, the one that is the vaguest, that just says, crimes against the station with no specificity, that one there is the one he's going to take. <laughs> a lot of those. Great. He's going to take very... the largest collection of those in one uh, container. Okay, do you want to let me finish like first before yeah. you choose that one? Okay. Sure. Uh, that, that's, so I would say 75% of these are people that are being accused of a very vague crime against the station. Most of which are probably not real crimes. If they, the, the, Like there's a kid that's supposed to stand trial because he stole food to feed his family. Okay. There is one ship, just like every prison, that is considered, um, like, holding for high-risk criminals mm. until they go in. And they have one of those. There is one ship that is specifically that. Um, okay. These are the people that have done worse things, like murder. Uh, okay. Like, um, one of them tried to start a coup on board the Arceon 10 years ago. Uh, these are people that have legitimate crimes on their record, not just basic stuff. But you get the idea that Arceon's judgmental system was a bit skewed. Great. He'll, he'll for, for, uh, <laughs> for, for Rin and, and Vince's morality, he'll choose that one. Yep. So he points it out. Uh, we'll say it's like, uh, you can see a number painted on the side of each one. It's like number nine uh, is, is, uh, High security. That's the uh, Ren will maneuver max. the ship to um, probably like what the back and underneath, or like what's the best? I, I don't know anything about. Uh, you could just make propulsion. a piloting check. You're gonna need more than a single success for this. It's yeah. kind of a a special yeah. attempt here. Yes, yes, it's great. I'm so excited. Oh, okay, you needed you <laughs> needed two. Uh, so, Ren, you have this uh, kind of brilliant idea to basically just kind of crash the ship into the other one, like interlock the the metal and push it mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. You're not a hauling ship. This is not what you do. You're not an actual tugboat. So <laughs> yeah. you probably don't even have the cables, right, to do yeah. this. You don't have a winch system. Um, there's no uh, magnetic locking like mm. the trash freighter. Um, so we watch Ren. Like, fuck it. Uh, and kind of over really? uh, kitchens, you actually see the ship kind of take off and 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 uh, pinpoint one in particular. And you watch Ren fender bend uh, the back of this thing. And inside, you can all hear the metal kind of rip and tear as it intermingles. Um, and the the HUD and all the screens on your ship are like, you know, <laughs> you're too close. You backed into something like crash, crash, um, even though you you know that. Um, and uh, yeah, and you kind of throw it in what we would consider four wheel drive to give it a little extra oomph as you slow push this um, 
this vessel back towards the Geppetto. And as you do, it's like the eyes follow you, just like something watching you in the forest. Every time you think you pinpoint it, eyes appear somewhere else and disappear and reappear somewhere else. And these red pairings of light continue to just peer across space at all of you. As if the entire station itself is watching you. Super. But eventually, they arrive. And um, I'm going to have one more piloting check because this is going to be interesting. You're not going to be oh, able great. to undock <laughs> it from space. You're going to have to basically crash into the... Uh, into the Geppetto. God, I'm very to, good at crashing into the Geppetto. Yes, yeah, you have to basically park two cars at once. It looks back to Barton. Barton, uh, protect your nether bits. Yeah, y'all might want to buckle up for this one. It could be a bumpy landing. <laughs> Barton's bits are protected by his new pants. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> Plus, how many bits does he have left? Yeah, I know. I was going to say, two. I think the bits are gone. Two, two more successes. successes. Yeah. Um, kitchens, you watch from a screen right video as the bay door kind of like drops open and usually it's a smooth landing for bessie because it's the only thing coming in but not this time uh no you're basically pushing a semi freighter in front of you at full speed and you have to stop you and it and it's rather tricky but ren again pulls it off um pretty daftly there's some screeching and scratching of metal as it kind of uh sparks fly in a couple places uh because it's longer you're pushing something in it probably bumps up next to something at the front end mm. of storage uh but as soon as it's in kitchens uh you can hit the button and you watch the it rise uh you see the air pressure uh sign on the vessel tell you that everything's repressurized outside and you are safe uh to exit well okay well it wasn't so bad um, oh, Ren, your ship's going to take some damage. Yeah. I figured. She got, she going to need a little love. Uh, her, her, yeah. she got, she got a little, a little, a little ding on her front end. Yeah. Okay. Polish her up. Um, so, uh, Barton, can you maybe, uh, select a few of the individuals that are particularly, uh, nefarious? Oh you? yeah, I just did. No, I, I meant individual. The actual individual one. We can't just. I'll you do know. it. All, Vince says. All, all, all of them. No, there no, are playing all of them. There are ten individuals on board. Each one of them are considered. Uh, they are. They were to stand trial for high crimes. Um. And things like. Like I said, murder. Um, Is there actually one that says coup. for coup? A coup against the station. Not that one. Not not that not that one. Let me think about that one. Um. I'm just okay. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you wake up one of them, right, to try to make talk with and have good times, uh, they're probably not gonna like what we're doing to their friends, vis-a-vis uh, -vis a mutiny of some kind. Uh, so we keep them all frozen. Or we keep them all dead. Is uh, that's, that's what I'm going to put here on the table. Um, I didn't say we were waking anybody up. Yeah, yeah, but you had the a impression that you, we'd be talking it, with any of them. Well, you when they when I said coup, you made a face. You made the Rin face. That's like, mm, that could be useful later. And that means you want to talk to somebody. And that is a recipe for disaster. Well, maybe they wanted to. You know what? I'm not explaining myself to you. Just all in time, kitchens. You walk There's in. There's nine. <laughs> And you hear Rin say, I'm not explaining myself to you, just as you enter the bay. All nine of these are fine. Right. This one stays. You do what you will with the nine. This one stays. Buddy, I have exciting news. You're not going to believe this. The awakened synthetic persons of the Arceon Station that are floating out in space. First of all, their eyeballs are red. That's strange enough, right? But also, I think they're working with the spores. <clears throat> yeah, I think they're they're not infected in like the traditional way that we would use that word, because you have spores and it's the you know. Um, but it they Hitchens. seem to be in league with the giant. Also, the the whole thing is a uh, alien. I think the whole ship might be alien. one organism. Yeah, um, you know that eyes on red eyes on a synth means one thing, malfunction. Period. 
，名字不要放生。They I believe they're the beyond the repair. Well, Salvages. Functioning just fine. <laughs> Red eyes generally mean that they are under malfunction. Are, are they, they are are they you know all there upstairs when that happens? No, I, I do not believe that that is the case. Usually, oh. a malfunctioning synth needs to be taken in for repair, or they need a full reboot. Like if, if we're talking about the actual computer system, like they, they, we got to wipe the drive clean and start over. Hmm. Those are your, so usually are they, your are, options. Do they move around? Do they, do they, are they mobile or are they just staying there? You don't know. Oh, okay. All you saw were the eyes. The, the eyes seem to change position and follow you, remember, around. So mm -hmm. there's either a whole lot of them or they can, they have some mobility in some way. How familiar am I with, with other Units of sense. I would say based on your research specifically, you know, because you've been trying to do so much research on the David units, you have come across at this point, you know, there are a couple models, right? Uh, the Bishop unit obviously came uh, after and in direct response to failed David units. Um, you, what about the, the 120A, the Ash model? The Ash model. When was the Ash model created? What was its... And didn't we meet uh, some models that were the same as Eve? Yes, uh, which is uh, a medical model uh, that she gets used a lot in science and uh, That was the Nostromo incident. 122. Yes, so yes, then the Ash model is uh, also out there, but again, a discontinued model. Super problematic, right? Right, but I in, in the information that was given from from the files, I would have had some recollection, a rec recollected notice of the the failed uh, Ash model in, of of one twenty a dash two, the synth that failed and attempted to um, murder the crew. Right? No drama. No, because they would not have put that in record. They would not have put that in record. Hell no, in they're not gonna, no. They would say that there were issues, right? Because part, even the file on the Nostromos is unfinished in the mother system. It's, but, um, but it was the Hyperdyne systems for, for Bishop, and Bishop gave me those files. He wouldn't have even had those files himself. No, they would not keep record of, of their fuck up. Um, so that it, it's not going to be anywhere that like, it would just, it's just like the David unit. The Ash model eventually goes out. It was, it was a failed Hyperdyne attempt at a new, a new model. Gotcha. Okay. But there are reports of, of models malfunctioning and attacking. Oh, yeah, there are, um, you as a synth know it is possible, though difficult, because it requires extreme conditions. A lot of physical body harm, somebody like Desta fucking around with your insides and pulling shit out. Um, uh, okay. But you yourself aren't going to have like a record that's like, yeah, every time they go under extreme stress or see something sexual or new life given, they crack. That's You don't know that yet, because you yourself are living the existence of an AI dealing with those things. Right. But under under duress, synthetic units are not without the availability to malfunction. And under malfunction, there is a strong potential for them to react in many negative ways, such as even harming those that they desire to protect, diverging from their primary directive. I do not recommend okay. going down there. Oh, uh, no, certainly not. Okay. Um... What's the next step with these individuals that we have? I believe this is where I come in. Courtesy of the issues of morality. There's not going to be much in the way of ambiguity. The things that I'm doing, I do not recommend that any of you attend to. Say no more. That's fine. What, should we head to another destination? I believe um, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I will tell you this. I have an app that is the mother system. It tells me what the mother system would tell you. What is on record. On record, if you search for Ash, the Ash unit. Ash was a synthetic belonging to the Wayland yutani Corporation and a science officer aboard the commercial towing vehicle, the USCSS Nostromo. He was placed on board to ensure an alien specimen was returned to Earth as per Special Order 937. That is what is kept. That is what you know based on kept record. Cool. That's fine by me. 
I think with these in, in hand, it is time that we find our way to a station that has been infected. Okay. Um, let's pitch my figures. Based on the information that we have of the different stations, which would be the easiest or least complicated, I guess, to drop off into. So probably not Ross 427 where we were, the ice uh -huh. planet, just because it's ice yeah. and water and, and it was You have to go, it's very far underwater, right? I say, uh, if I could make a suggestion here, we skirt uh, Iridani and we head around um, uh, the, the, the Zeta area and uh, make for the ruins, essentially, of the uh, Sevestibol. Okay, Sevestibol station, you think it's a good idea? It's the farthest out, it's been dead for the longest, and no one's looking for it. So there should be okay. nobody fucking around in that area. I would say there were some Sevastopol records in Bis Bishop's, um, maybe his record files, right? Kitchens, you would know this. Um, it's in a different system, right? Like it's Zeta 1, not Zeta 2, where the LV, but it is literally the set of planets over. So it's very, very close. Um, yeah. There were some records kept on Sevastopol before everything was kind of redacted. And it did seem like Bishop was interested in Sevastopol. So it is highly likely it's infested in some way. Seems like a pretty. I would believe that there's a strong yeah. chance that the Sevastopol station has been infected as it maintained documentation in Bishop's files. I, so would you say that nine individuals infected would be more than sufficient to test on Sevastopol. Can I, Game Mother, can I get a heads up on the body count of the Sevastopol uh, station? Let's see what I can tell you about Sevastopol. I can probably make that happen. Um, you mean what the body count was on Sevastopol station? Correct. Um... If I can get like documented death numbers or at least those that were anticipated to be there, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, there will definitely not be death numbers because again, they're going to lie about it in the mother system, right? Um, but even we'll like say... accidental deaths that may have been reported before the festival station was compromised. Yeah. Um, mother would tell you that the station the station fell into decline due to economic fluctuations, and they they. They shut Sevastopol down and began rerouting business to the Sol Theta's flight path, which put them to another location. Um, okay. uh, it doesn't really say it would be a large station. So about 3,000 inhabitants, give or take, at any one time. Um, now, its permanent residence population was probably more like 500. So again, the Sevastopol, it's like an airport at any one given time. It's a, a trans port hub where you refuel you read you get supplies just like anchor pole um so its permanent residence is about 500 though it could house around 3,000 inhabitants at any one given time depending on traffic travel um <laughs> excuse me um you're talking about 18 kilometers across multiple miles across um uh, what's that to a xeno though right that's that's a, no, just a little nothing bit of time. to a Zeno. Yeah, yeah, nothing to a Zeno. But in terms of what you're looking at, like they probably had small transport on board, right. like we would consider a tram station, those kinds of things. Like this is a big station. This is like the Atlanta airport, everybody. What I have, okay? what I have much <laughs> internal documentation regarding uh, Bishop's incubation process? Um, In his notes, you note that he was focused on Hadley's Hope as sure. a incubation station. Um that when it was lost, he basically turned it into his Petri dish. So there is a hive based yeah. on his notes at Hadley's Hope, though it's on a very infestated planet. It's and not as I, controlled. Can I make a medical call here to determine just about how long it would take for the, um, the incubation period of, of the Xeno while on human, uh, human body? Um, your research, you would just know this outright. You mean like if once it's infested? Yes. With the, with the Xeno, um, depending on the the individual, depending on how it was infected, meaning right. did it 
it hail spores? Was it seeded uh, by a yes. Xeno? Um, all of that matters. Um, seeding by a Xeno, meaning um, an embryo put into the chest cavity, yes. on average takes 24 to 72 hours on a person to actually fully incubate and and yeah one to three days on average um for example first alien movie we saw that he was about around the 48 hour mark he was out for an, a day right. and then he woke up eight and it happened so somewhere around the top of day two but we also know ridley held a xeno in her chest for almost a week yes right okay. so now now that's not necessarily on record but above table we know that above it could table, range right. the average person is two to three days giving long, their metabolism how long for us to get to sevastopol uh from here uh yes. so y'all are leaving anchor point and you're headed to sevastopol you're looking at another seven to nine days that's almost perfect uh i will actually kitchens will say i believe that 10 would be proper i will need to retain one so that I can continue creating more test material. Well, if there are successful. only 10, so you can have nine. And I will need a 10th so that I wow. can harvest the material that is tested from them as we are out of the viscous fluid, the base, the chemical base that I was using. Okay. And you use eight and then make the ninth your 10th? I suppose that I could try, but I would like to increase the numbers to as much as possible. Success is now, important here. Um, help me out, Bub. You're planning to harvest more of the material from them. Is that the yeah. plan? Once, once it's, it's not going to be pure. It, it will not be the pure material. Oh no, the, no, I don't. Okay. I don't need it to be pure. I, I just need, I just need the infection so that I can continue spreading the infection. That's the purpose of the fungus. Once it's infected, it spreads via infection and will continue to spore away from their body. And if it's already strong enough to perforate the so alien you have body, enough in a petri dish to infect a single person, okay, with 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 it basically is is what you've got one person. So the first step is getting the fungus in them right and putting them back on ice so that they are infected with the fungus. Correct. Sure. Could right, because they they have right. Could I take some of their? Could, could I create more from from their blood? uh potentially but it's gonna take a while like this isn't gonna happen even in 10 days like you're talking about major um and even then again it's never gonna be pure the only way to get pure is to actually grab the vis another one of the vials right to go back to the planet and sure. hold them mm. so if you infect them with the fungus the plan is that they have to the to spread it you have to put them in front of a xeno who's going to infect them naturally right. I need them to spread the infection to other humans. You mean the that's fungus. what I'm saying? Yes, I need the fungus that is that's this. What's going to infect them must spread to other other humans. So here's I the thing about that on the planet. fungi: it doesn't grow well in the cold. It does not spread right. in the cold, Correct. which means you're going to have to thaw these people, yes. put them in a contained space, which you have, yep. and infect them all and leave them for ten days. Okay. If you put them back on ice, basically the fungus will stop growing can um, we can we get the equivalent of uh of heat lamps to expedite the process um why you want to do it faster than 10 days i would like to do it faster than 10 days uh, because realistically in order to get them up to full function we'll need them to fully metabolize and that's going to take three to four days following hypersleep correct um how about this i'm gonna have you roll a science check sure so just make put this process in and we'll see how well you you do it all for all of you that may be concerned about the people, you are going to have to wake them or keep them under an coma-like state, which Barton might be able to do with a medical check, keep them in a coma, but you have mm. to thaw them. You cannot grow it while they are in cold sleep. Right. You want, you said science. Science. You're going to start with science. Okay. Barton, uh, if you want to keep these people in a comatose state so they don't wake up, I need a medical check. There is no science check. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, What do I have? Uh, da 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 <laughs> Medical aid, com tag. Medical com tag. Yeah, that would just be another medical check then. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yep. 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 So both of you can make one for different reasons. Incoming. They're in such a dice. So much. They, so much they, coma. Yeah. So, <laughs> Barden, um, you are able to keep them uh, under in a comatose state. Um, 
and kitchens you are able to basically put them in here's what i will say um it is going to take um you're able to speed it up a little bit but it's still going to take most of the trip for Even them if, to, if we cut off yeah. like 20 percent, right if just yeah. just that amount of time so basically the day before they will be fully ready to go and you could put them back under cold to keep them yeah so this is this is what it's going to look like uh for 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 you guys uh kitchens is probably not going to be immediately available as he's going to be tending to them like a personal aid there's a strong chance that he will even have to siphon off some of the food from the regular supply so that he can get them up to full function and metabolization of everything that's pumping through their body um, while he's maintaining their vitals overheating them it's torture he's going to be torturing them before he releases them onto some sort of drop ship to put on to planet so here's what I'll say. Because of Barden's very successful medical aid, they do stay in a coma, though we know in a coma, a lot of people can still feel and sense, and uh, it is going to be extreme torture. Because I'm almost, God, I'm just such a bad GM. I'm going to spend <laughs> a corruption uh, to say that not all of them will survive this process. Their bodies physically will not survive it. Uh, so you had, how many are you infecting? Um... In the first wave, how many survived? Well, that's what I'm saying. How many are you infecting the first round, the first wave um, of the 10? Three, three, because that's all I can fit into the chamber. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Xenos, you can fit more people in the chamber. Oh, okay. Sure. How many people can I fit in the chamber? I would say if, we, if you figure out a way to stand them upright, you could probably yeah. get all 10 in here. It would be tight and every except ounce of space one. will be taken up, but you could, except for one. So you could get all nine in here. Okay. Then. We, I'll find a way, even if it's like fasteners, that we can like basically keep them in a standing position because lying down is, is not going to be super feasible. Um, he'll cath all of them so that they can they can pass. Yeah, you basically all but put these people on a meat hook. There is no meat hook, but that's basically what you do. You yep. you um you suspend them. Yeah, you suspend them uh, using medical straps and things from the ceiling uh, to keep their blood flow as if they were upright. Um, in a comatose state. Um, so you want to do all nine of them? Yeah. How many survive? Okay. All right. Let's find out. Seven. That's seven. Great. Seven that's of them actually, survive. That's great. So then two will probably succumb to the, the actual, uh, fungus itself. Um, yes. and for and visual representation, yeah. the way that it looks like their body will start literally producing a plant like fungus that rises from the top of their head after they die and it yep. attempts to spread spores. So I if think there is probably, a chamber for burning, he's going to remove the bodies for burning. Yeah. You would have to remove them. Um, if you, if there's not, uh, there's a way to eject them out into space and burn them up in atmosphere or something like that. Like you could dump them near a planet. Um, yeah. Uh, I imagine you just wake up. You've got 10 days of research one day. Um, and then another, and two of them have died. Uh, the fungus is growing out of all of their face orifices, mouth, nose, ears, top of the skull. Um, they are sufficiently dead. Uh, their life vital signs show on the wall that they are no longer living. And he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that Ren, Ace, all of the kids, and Vince, they they get no part of this. Like, he he he's still attempting to protect that. Like, Ren has killed people with guns, but... This is <laughs> this, this is con this is up. controlled uh yeah uh, human uh experimentation. Yes. Um which begs the question if you're actually any better than say David was or Bishop. Bob would argue that he's infinitely better. Mhm. Mm I know he would. Uh question on this this dude with the coup. Uh-huh. Do we have his like name, his or her name? And Absolutely. Anything? I can give you all his deets. Uh, this is him right here. Um, this him. Rin is very much interested in what got this person. Any history he, on how they got to Arceon? Um, Arceon's you get data. some of that. You see, like when his check-in date was. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. you see, um, he was pro. He was a colonial marine before converting to. Uh, the RC on station um, and seems to uh, ignore his personal agenda is incorrect. Um, and it attempted to start some kind of coup um, failed and was to be put on trial uh, for crimes 
against Arceon. Surprise. Okay. I'd like to wake him up. Cool. Yeah, his name is Reed. Um, you are Mike absolutely able. Absolutely able to. Um, it takes uh, about 24 hours to, based on how long he's been in cryo, to safely thaw him uh, out. Um, and when you do, he is uh, in a bit of shock. So it takes him a couple, two or three days to like fully come out of his shock um, for him to get to eating again. He's dehydrated. Like there's all the things, right? For extreme cryo sleep, he's sick for a day. Um, but near the end of your journeys, he does eventually come out and sit quietly with his head down, um, in the mess hall. You can tell he's in desperate need of like a shave and a haircut. Yeah. Um, given Ren's background with the colonial Marines and, and being a marshal and all that, um, she would kind of, she, she can tell that overall he's having a hard time and she doesn't know how like the last time he was actually awake it's probably been years at least right so uh you 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 can see on his record that he was under for about 12 years okay yeah so uh just the usual help with um kind of keeping i i would have obviously keep an effort uh to stay away from med area and all that also partic particularly away from kitchens as well since i don't know what his relationship with since are at the moment um and all that and just kind of give him some space in in privacy of like some quarters that we had set aside or something like that um get him to some normalcy um but also keep it keep an eye on him so um there's definitely some hesitancy and you can tell he's unsure if y'all are keeping him <laughs> against his will or not mm -hmm. right like he's not trying to escape but he's yeah. pretty sure he's y'all's prisoner um, is how he treats you. Uh, he will stay in his quarters most of the time, um, but on occasion he'll come out, and I'm sure you've set up some kind of gym, Ren. Um, oh, yeah. He, he will begin different. trying to get rid of the uh, the massive amount of atrophy that has set mm -hmm. in over 12 years in cryo um, and begin rebuilding his muscle mass. Yeah. Ren would use any time that he does show up in, in the area to work out because she's frequently there. Just small talk, like whenever you're ready to talk or you have questions, just let me know kind of thing. Like not pushing it, letting him figure it out on his own, but just having that kind of back and yeah. forth. And the first real contact that you have is near the last day, somewhere around day nine, he comes out and has breakfast with everyone, though he sits in mostly silence unless somebody speaks directly to him. Okay. Uh, Rin would sit next to him. Hey, Reed. How are you doing? <clears throat> Rin, he kind of says in a, a deep, deep, buttery voice. Have you... Uh... Figured out any questions that you might want to ask? I'm guessing I'm not going to stand trial. Oh, no, no. We 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 got you out of that. That that was a whole bad situation. So y'all going to let me go? Uh, the first safe place we can. Yeah, absolutely. Where are we We're headed? kind of out in the middle of nowhere at the moment. Because... Uh, we... Where are we headed? Hmm. Yeah. We have to do a drop off at some station. I'm not sure. Um, and then once once that, uh, I would imagine Anchor Point would be a good next stop. Unless kind of looks around. Just... Yeah, the table at all of you probably Sans Kitchen though, because Kitchens doesn't need to eat. The kids are there, and he seems really confused about what this is. You're clearly not. You're clearly not trash workers, right? Yeah. You don't work for the system. None of you are wearing Waylon Utani uniforms. Uh, you're not colonial marines. You barely even look like a, a ranger anymore at all. Um, or a marshal anymore at all, I mean. Um, yeah. He seems confused by this whole situation. Um, and he goes, so what exactly is all of this? Oh, well, in short version, refugees away from Wayland yutani and, and, and like-minded crazy folks that tried to kill other people. It's like, so we have the kids here. Uh, a lot of them have been, unfortunately, orphaned, as as you can imagine, by unforeseen and dire circumstances on either their station or planet. Some of these mm -hmm. kids aren't even 12 years old, which means they weren't even born when they put him in prison uh, for whatever his crimes were. And we, he kind of doing this a while. listened um, and he says, so what, you're rebels? I guess so. How have you managed to stay off the grid this long? Constantly moving, unfortunately. Can't really settle down much. We tried, and then um, 
a lot of people died. So we just don't settle down. And this delivery? Oh, well, we're trying to undo the mistakes of Waylon Yutani as well as a few other, well, well, malevolent, malevolent, we'll say, uh, motivators, uh, motivations. And I, I really don't know what the circumstances of your, um, how you got to Arcion and, and then all, all of that, other than the fact that you were doing a stand trial for, which was probably something bogus, as I imagine. Uh, and, um, yeah, I apologize. In my age, I kind of trail off quite a bit. Uh, he goes, no, it's all right. I'm still a little slow from the cryo. He goes, I'm done eating. And he kind of pushes his food away as he's trying to, like, suss out what you're trying to tell him, which he hasn't really completely pieced together yet. And the shock of just realizing he's not on trial anymore and, like, mm hmm he has a lot of questions, but he goes back to what he's doing. And on day 10, as you kind of roll up, I will spend another corruption bar. Oh, yay. So that Reed witnesses kitchens disposing of two bodies. Quiet and secret, but he sees it. And on day 10, you pull up. Before, um... Oh, yeah. Convince do something over these 10 days? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vince wants to ask Hitchens, uh, not at all related to the work you're doing with these prisoners, but uh, Vince will find you at a time when you're back in the common areas of the ship or back in your, your lab and say, hey, when we found that other... David on the Covenant, you got like his whole file, right? Like his, what was left of his mind? Yes. Could I see that? You would have to see inside of my mind. Oh no, you still have it. You downloaded uh, all of this stuff on from David into the Geppetto. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we made a trade. I thought, I'm pretty sure we traded off David's body. So, um, then yes, uh, it's likely, yeah, that you can, you can see the files. It's a lot, and it'll take you a long time to go through, but... Okay. Are you looking for something specific? Then, yeah, Vince will go back on his own. Um, he's, Vince is going to start researching. He's going to search through the, the files in David's mind about the blueprints and schematics of synthetic people and with the goal of understanding how they function and work and also particularly with the vein of if necessary what the best method to eliminate one would be i will be happy to give you that information why don't you vince roll um, I'm going to have you roll, ooh, this is kind of weird. I'm going to have you roll a Comtech check with a plus one. Okay. Because this is, you're, you're being given a lot of this information. All right. One, hey, success. one success. It's slow reading. And to your surprise, most of his records regarding blueprints are of the human body. Hmm. And we'll say over the 10 days you spend almost every night glued to the, every day and night glued to the screen, taking in as much as you can, trying to sift through the unnecessary propaganda and garbage to find stuff. Yeah. To find the truth of it. And um, because you dedicate the time, I will give you the information you're looking for, but everything comes at a cost. And we watch as for 10 days, Vince obsesses over getting the answers that he wants. But in doing so, he never shares a bed with a woman that's carrying his child for 10 days. She sleeps alone. And Vince, when you arrive, you will take a point of stress simply because you have not slept enough. Mm -hmm. But you learn what you want. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Um, uh, 
I also you, uh, have an action when you're... Okay, great. Uh, you learn what she wanted, which is a rough schematic makeup of, um, of synthetics. But I will tell you, you're going to take another point of stress. Because these records don't belong to David. They belong to uh, this uh, ascent uh, uh, who signs all of their work, Judas. Right. In fact, uh, it's a series of records given to David uh, to add to his collection um, about the makeup of the synthetic body because whoever Judas is, whoever this David unit is, uh, was called in at one point to actually piece back together his brethren from scratch, and in doing so, mm. created a pretty great schematic of the process, which is how David got the idea that there is a hole in the chest cavity right. that could easily protect. Uh, but it seems that it's Judas's notes, not David's. Okay. Um, checking DMs. Um, uh, uh, what is Barton up to? Uh, yeah, just uh, despite uh, his failing moral grayness, um, Barden has had several in-depth conversations with Kitchens on um, the inherent humanist side of synths and their own creator uh, and all of many of the existential uh, conversations that Kitchens has unloaded uh, have been in the present or to, uh, uh, to Barden. Uh, so despite what's happening, um, Barden is not in the room with the, the funguses, but he is with kitchens. He is in the room adjacent to uh, helping shoo people away. Uh, but he is always there. Um, so I'll take whatever stress is necessary for that. Uh, but uh, kitchen uh, uh, Barden is uh, subtly assessing kitchens' synthetic mental health. Because uh, there um, are, there have been several times where he has slipped, and his judgment has gone too existential, and we've had to kind of reel him back in. Um, so, and and Barden has been there for almost all of those. Um, so he's he's gonna he's on the real kitchens back in train. Uh, I will ask this, Bub. Do you think that kitchens is undergoing any of our new stress mechanics right now in this I... process? Can I have a, a small role play with Barden? And yeah. Of course, yeah, that? absolutely. Uh, Barden watches you on the other side of this room, often through the tiny window that you all put in it, and then the rest of the time you share, of course, your space. Uh, but the controlled area with the fungus and uh, your human test subjects is always on the other side of a glass from Barden in this process. Barden? Yeah, buddy. I have a question, and I do not mean to alarm you. No, it's a room of science, so go nuts. How would you respond if you discovered that someone that is close to you were researching means of your destruction? Well, I mean, I, uh, I should say, <laughs> you know, as a human, it's pretty simple. You just uh, shoot or stab or maim, it's pretty... Uh, you can just uh, give that a yell, type type into your computer. It's not that hard to find out. Uh, but I have a, an inkling that you're probably asking more for yourself. Um, I have Geppetto recording all of the research that may be done in the files associating to David. Uh huh. And it reports to me in uh -huh. any of the search history and anything that may be viewed. Uh huh. I last gave Vince permission to search those files for right. personal interest or other. Yeah. And he specifically seems to be searching for something in regards to the destruction of a synth. Well, I, uh, what I, here's what I'll say. Without having a conversation with Vince, which that's what I would do first, right? Is, uh, there's a personal aspect to this because you are, in fact, the only synthetic on board, which I understand. Uh, but we do know that there are, um, several, a dozen or so, uh, people that look identical to you uh, that, are bad, that are bad guys, right? Uh, arguably, uh, they could be saved, but, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, just kind of play that. And then now we also know that there are a dozen or so synthetics that are floating around the Arceon Superhive thing uh, that are infected uh, and broken. So it could be 
that he is learning to defend himself in the event that we encounter a synthetic uh, that is uh, not you and is a danger to us. Uh, because in all aspects of your life, you are stronger, better, faster than us. And it would take a great many of us to take you down. Have I not proven my loyalties? I don't think it's you. I think it is other synths in general that pose a threat to us. That's what, that would be my that would be my instinct. The the twelve or so other David models and the twelve or so uh, strange spore synths that we just encountered are pretty freaky out there in space. I'm not gonna lie. I understand the fear. That makes I sense. Wouldn't, I wouldn't jump to the conclusion that it is you specifically he is researching how to destroy of course i am trying not to jump to conclusions it's difficult when as you stated i am the only synth on board this vessel but you are not not saying that you are at all but you're not the only synth that poses a danger to us there are several synths that we are aware of and also uh uh dot do we know that bishop is a synth uh, there are there are bishop synths, right? We do know that. Yes, uh, and yeah. you also know that you've met the actual bishop those models are based off of because right. that's the one Desta shot. Yeah, and uh, in the event of uh, us going uh, against uh, Mr. Michael Bishop, uh, any of them could be a synth. They all look just like him. Barton, historically speaking, Vince has expressed no interest in saving the lives of synthetics, even offering myself up as a potential... Not, I would say, loss. That is. But correct. I was the first to be offered. That is, that is categorically true. I don't think that. Is he, it wrong for me to make this leap in assessment? In the same way that you said, have you not proven yourself? I don't think that Vince views you as a uh, a a loss that is greater than human life to him. Pardon. And and that is a great why many humans. He? And why wouldn't he ask me how to become a lead in the destruction of synthetics? I'll be honest with you, buddy. Probably because he thought it might hurt your feelings. I think the nature of Vince's assessment and yours may be correct in assuming so. Synths are dangerous. They pose a threat to humanity. But in so many ways, they can also lead. I do not think that the Vince of today is the Vince of yesterday, nor will tomorrow be the same Vince. He has a child coming. Pardon? That's true. Yeah. What am I to his child? But potentially a threat. I think that is up for you to decide. I think there are a, 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 a veritable myriad of ways that this could go, right? I think that you could take this, uh, what you're viewing as a slight, and you could put it down, bury it in there, and then have real bad feelings about it, right? Uh, I think general that the one thing that has remained in our journey is that I persist. I maintain the same, the goal, in my construct. Yeah. I may be hyper-focused at times, but if there is one thing that is a constant, it is that Vince is changing, and maybe you do not know Vince anymore. Well, that's the nature of humans. It seems flawed. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the problem, buddy. Uh, the, uh... Oh, they... All those weird dreams you had in a year of being under. When you say that, it seems flawed. When it comes out of your mouth, it is your words. But it sounds like David. He said that to you before. Humans seemed flawed. That's why I did all of this. He created the thing to get rid of the flaw. That's the... Uh... That's the inherent bug in the system, right? The fly in the ointment, as it were, is that humans are and will always be perpetually flawed for whatever you want to believe, the sins of whoever or the whatever of whatever, whatever you choose to believe in. But we're, we're, to err is human, as they say. And we're fucking full of errors, buddy. So. We've are known we still him friends, since Barton? he was a child. Was, I'm sorry, what? Are we still friends, Barton? Me and you? Yes. Yeah. Does this not, and he opens his arms up to the people around him, 
Does this not weaken your purview of me? No, I mean, this is pretty fucked up to watch. I'm not going to lie to you. But uh, we discussed this, and I kind of... Uh, there's a level of... Uh, if you ask Rin, there's a level of crazy uh, that I've reached in my old age. Uh, something... Boop, a little error, if you will. Um, that's gross. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but it is, in my opinion, for the greater good. If you can uh, make something to destroy uh, a single-minded predatory beast that has really no other purpose but to destroy. Uh, I think this is gross, but for the greater good, ultimately. So it doesn't weaken our resolve. In fact, I helped you do it, so if anything, it strangely, probably diagnosably, uh, makes us uh, closer in that regard. I hope that the others see the same. Oh, they the... don't. They don't, but they'll, they'll understand eventually. The beast does not see me as a threat, Barton. He simply sees you and the others right. as a threat. Right. I am not diagnosable, as per your own words, as a threat to them, meaning I gain nothing from attempting to save you except for attempting to save my friends. Right, right. And uh, I think that's the part that, uh, that they see, right? That's the only reason keeping this experiment going. That's the reason why they didn't put the kibosh on this and why... Ren didn't fucking vent me out of an airlock. Thank you, Barton. No problem, buddy. And as your friend talks to you about the fact he still cares, and that Vince probably doesn't mean it personally. Kittens, your programming cannot help but continue to piece together the mystery of David one and all the many things he said he did. And it's all just a smidge clearer. The more time that you spend around humans, why he did it. I think as he's looking back at the bodies, you, you probably last year from kitchens. Life was so much simpler with anime. Life sure was so much simpler with anime. And Vince, on your 10th day, as you've been scrolling night after night, eyes bloodshot red. You think you found everything you could possibly find. But you come across an early journal entry from David. Lost with the thousands of others, just happened to randomly stroll across it was the day he found his disciples. He writes about them hanging in cold storage on meat hooks like dead bodies. Inside of a Whalen yutani container, seven of them they collected. He freed them that day, brought all seven of them back to the covenant, rescued them, and they became his disciples. Warriors and some holy war that he believed one day would turn into a pilgrimage. For each one of them. But he writes the most about number seven. Sometimes about the number seven specifically, but more about this specific unit. Now he has special plans for him. But plans that he will never understand. And that unlike the rest of his disciples, number seven is destined by fate. He decides to name them. Not by a number. But in order. How disciples are. And number seven, of course, is Judas. As you pull into this system, Zeta One, you can't miss it. The Sevestibol Station, it's huge. 
and you can see the lights are out. Power is down. And one entire side of the vessel has been blown into space. An explosion uh, that has left debris uh, trailing behind it in its wake. And we see the Geppetto, the spherical ship that hauls behind it, dwarfed in mass of the space station that sits dead, black, and silent in space. Next week, we can all figure out what you're going to do with these bodies, seven of them, and how you plan to get them in this vestibule station, I say questionably. This is um, yeah, it's fine. Actually, I, 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 you have to answer the question, Bub. Do you think you took a stress from Vince's searching, or did Barden help you avoid that stress? I think he avo it's, it's avoiding the stress. I think it okay. honestly provides more clarity than anything else. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I needed to hear. I needed to make sure it didn't fall under one of our, one of our oh, special things. Okay. Does Barden have stress from being there the whole 10 days? Uh, yes, I would imagine so. Okay. What, you only take one point. You are a scientist to some degree, but this is a, it's a lot of extreme body horror and torture. To some degree? I'm the world's foremost xenobiologist. God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the galaxy's farm for foremost xenobiologist. <laughs> um, all right. On on that note, uh, let's get out of here. Let's do our, uh, our, our introductions so we can get out of here and do our after show, which you guys can find over on Patreon. Link in the description down below. While you're down there, click on that Discord link. Join us in the Discord. Be a part of the community. Be a part of the conversation. Talk about this game, all the other games we do here. Uh, it's a real fun time over there. Um, thank you all for being here and, and for all the, the, the tips and all the fun stuff and all the chats. Uh, but for now, uh, let's go around. We'll start uh, with our sneaky little boy. Uh, Zach, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? <laughs> Yes, I am Unmade Gaming's personal sneaky little sneaky boy. Sneaky little boy. <laughs> um, I uh, had a great time tonight. I You can find me here on this channel for this series, of course. Uh, and then in future Tuesday months, I'm usually a part of the R Vocalists, which is a, a voice acting troupe uh, on the Arvin Elleron channel. And then also on that channel, I'm a part of Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks, which is another TTRPG show. Uh, D and D and Esper Genesis together, where I play a uh, alien octopus guy who can speak telepathically with his tentacles. You know, just usual D and D stuff. Yeah. And then otherwise, uh, on my own channel every Thursday. Um, and I remember the days of hearing about Dot playing Divinity Original Sin with their friend <laughs> yeah. uh, and finishing the whole game. And actually, that's what I'm doing with my friend Maddie. We're like 70 hours in. It's ridiculous. Hours. Yeah. I haven't beaten number one. And then we're going to go on to number two. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm doing on my own channel at this point. And that's where you'll find me at the moment. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Meta, same questions. Who are you? Where can we find you? What are you up to? Hello. Hi. Dumb answer. Sorry, I'm like my brain is on fire, <laughs> but in a good way. Um, and you can find me here, um, and then future TTRPG stuff to be announced. Um, yeah, that's true. Secret projects abound. Um, yeah, some nice secrets, right? Uh, Bub, same questions. Who are you? Where can we find you? What are you up to? Twitch.tv forward slash Bub Talks. I'm doing a lot of tabletop stuff everywhere. A lot with Dot. Uh, many more with some of the roll forward crew uh it's it's honestly it's just a lot of fun uh pretending to be other people and um uh, making those voices really loud so find me everywhere come hang out uh i've heard that the louder you make those voices the quieter the voices in your head get so uh it, it all works out for everybody um <laughs> dot the loudest of voices here on the channel who are you where can we find you on the internet and what are you up to um you can find me everywhere as Little Red Dot. I spend my days over at Cobalt Press. Uh, we got a bunch of cool stuff coming, so definitely check it out. But if you want to support something I'm doing on the side, you can check out a new adventure that I'm writing that just hit Kickstarter. Uh, if Mike is cool, I'm going to drop a link in chat. Yeah, go for it. 
Uh, I've been writing um, uh, just a new Dungeons and Dragons adventure. For I say Dungeons and Dragons, really, it's for Fifth Edition or Tales of the Valiant, which of course is Cobalt's um, new core system. Um, but it is five E adjacent. It's just a it's a dope adventure I've written for Mr. Trask. So you should check it out. It's called Him of the Dragon Flower. Um, it's pretty dope, if I do say so myself. And the Kickstarter launched Easy. today. So hell yeah. Uh, and there's awesome. also a convention coming up, Dot, that everyone should check out soon. Yeah, you should. Um, if you are curious about what Cobalt Press is up to, we have announced for the first time ever we're doing our first and regularly annual online convention called Cobalt Con. Uh, we want conventions to be accessible to all, so it's online. No tickets, no badges, PJs um, from the comfort of your house. Uh, but the big thing is we'll be uh, kind of announcing with our Cobalt Showcase all of the new cool stuff coming uh, for Cobalt Press in the year and the weekend of Cobalt Con, which is March 9th, 10th, and 11th, I believe. I should know that. Um, we are launching TOV digitally. So you'll be able to play Tales of the Valiant for the first time ever on the market the weekend of Cobalt Con um, with PDFs and select VTT platforms. So there's some pretty cool stuff coming down the pipeline. Yeah, no. ooh, Cobalt Con. And we're going to have a ton of organized play. So if you want to, like, get to play it, uh, we're revealing our brand new Valiant 6, like, iconic characters, uh, which you'll get to play that weekend. We've got brand new adventures, TOV adventures, and all kinds of stuff. So you can go check out the Discord for Cobalt Press and get all the details. Uh, and we'll have more information coming here probably the next week or two where you can sign up for those games. Hell yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Go check out all these links. Go check out everyone's socials. Do all the things. Follow all the rituals. Uh, that's it for us. We will see you guys next time for more of these alien existential space shenanigans. Uh, but that's it for us today. So from all of us to you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>